so I, I tweeted a day or two ago, and it's, it's taking off right this second, something about, it, it was three things, and it was one, uh, I don't support Trump, I do believe in free speech. If you use your free speech to take away someone else's, then one day they will come for you. And I think that really sums up what's going on here, because if you look at what happened at the rally the other night, it wasn't the government that right. came in, so it wasn't a First Amendment issue. The government didn't say, you're not allowed to say this. But if we start getting to a place, and I'm not saying this is exactly what happened that night, because it's a little unclear who started what and whatever, but if we get to a place where everyone is just using their free speech to shout down everybody else, well, then we don't have free speech, and it has nothing to do with the government. So there's, there's a huge free speech play here, too, right? Yeah, well, they call that the heckler's veto. You're going to let one guy scream everybody else down. So then whoever is the biggest heckler is the person who controls the debate. And then, yeah, the broader point you make is, is perfect because not to plug my documentary that we're doing that we want to talk to you about. Plug away. That's, uh, that's it, the it, point. It pissed off a lot of my guys because it's called silenced, our war on free speech. And they go, no, it's not our war, it's the war. And we want to think, well, there's a war on all of us free thinkers and everything, but it isn't the government censoring us. We're fucking doing it to each other. I'm afraid if I say the wrong thing to you, you're going to think I'm a shitty person. You're afraid that if you post the wrong thing on Twitter, you're going to get fired from your job or people are going to come after you, they're going to call your advertisers. One wrong thing. So we're all kind of censoring each other. We're really... Why don't we just say, well, you, you know, you said that. What do you really mean? Oh, you're a Trump supporter. Well, why are you a Trump supporter? Well, I'm a, maybe, maybe somebody would say, well, I'm a Trump supporter because I believe America has the right to exist as a nation. Okay. Well, well I don't know. What do you mean? Da, 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 da. Right. You just talk. That's yeah. what people should do. You listen to one another. And right now we don't. We're so, all declaring war on each other. Right. So that's interesting. But it goes to the people that are taking the higher road here are almost destined to lose then, right? Because if you're taking the higher road here and you're saying, I'm gonna respect your free speech, you know, I'm gonna, I don't like what you say, but I'm gonna defend uh, your right to say it. Uh, if you take that road, well, basically from everything you've said here, there's gonna be a huge swell of people uh, that won't do that and thus will always win with the heckler's veto, right? That, that's where I see this all going. That's why I've been talking about it. They, so they were winning. But now there's but, a massive counterculture where people are saying, you know, me and Lauren, the director of the, the silence, we say we're going to make free speech cool again. You know, we don't have an agenda. We just want people to know that, you know, it's cool to share your point of view. It's cool to talk. And, and more people are getting that. If you look at whose profiles are being raised on Twitter, which is kind of Twitter is where the future is headed. That's why I love Twitter. And we could do a whole hour on just why I love Twitter. Yeah. Twitter is the future. The future is people Even though like the you. business is crumbling. You mean the yeah. ideas behind Twitter. Yeah, because really. the people who are kind of, I don't, I don't like the word thought leaders, but hip, smart, tech savvy people, here's what they're thinking. They're, they like people like you. They like people like Laura Southern. They like people like Milo. Uh, they like people like Gavin McGuinness. My profile is going. So the people who are sort of pro-free free speech, their profiles are growing. And then there's a pushback against the aggressive left. So what had happened is we had given everybody the heckler's veto to call you a homophobe, a racist, a misogynist, a transphobe if you say one wrong thing. And now you're realizing, well, that's shutting everybody's speech down. Now, before we had the, the regressive left, the SJWs, we had the moral majority. We had Tipper Gore trying to say, you can't listen to I, because you and I, were, you know, I don't want to say we're old, you know, yeah. we're, we're handsome men. Yeah. We're fucking old, man. Yeah. Like, oh, we, man. Ice T, body count, cop killer. Oh my God, you know, he's inciting violence. Uh, I used to Judas play Mortal Priest. Kombat. I never yeah. ripped anyone's spot yeah. out. You know? Oh my God, this kid committed suicide after listening to Judas Priest. This is satanic music. <laughs> we right. got to ban it. That's the right. Right. And then you fought off the right, the left did. And then the left came in, and now they're fucking doing it. And now instead of saying, well, video games make you violent, they say, well, video games make you hate women. And then we have a new counterculture that's going to push that back. And then guess what? Sisyphus is rock. You know, guys like you and me, our whole fucking lives, <laughs> we're going to be like, we'll be in 10 years, we'll be fighting the right again. And then in another 10 years, we'll be fighting the left again. Yeah. So that center and that bill, you know, it's interesting. The, the people that you just mentioned, they're like Laura and uh, or Lauren and um, Milo and the rest of them. Yeah. They're all to the right. And again, right. this always, I always feel like, oh, God, I'm, I'm the last man right. standing over here. Uh, but yes, it is it is growing. So how do we then coalesce around that, knowing that we're we're not going to support? I don't. I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for at this point. Uh, but that we can sit here and do this. How do we coalesce around that idea that we need conversation more than we need? everyone, judging everybody into oblivion. Well, I've, I'm a little bit of an idealist, and I truly believe if we're talking to each other, we're not killing each other. That's a start, 
right? What a lot of people don't realize if, if they haven't studied a lot of history, we, we, you know, we think we can't have a Cambodian Holocaust. We think that we can't have an Armenian genocide. We think we can't have Miles mile Great Leap Forward or the, what they had in the Soviet Union. Why can't we? Why are we so special? Well, that all started with censorship culture. You can't say certain things. That started with us versus them. For the Cambodian, gen the Cambodian genocide, you had the farmers were the real people and the city people were the bad people. That was identity politics, even within uh, a single race of people. And then what happens, you don't talk, you go to the underground, and then the fucking lunatics talk to only other lunatics, because mm -hmm. they're still gonna talk. And then you have all the lunatics and the underground talking to each other, that's how you get people blowing shit up. That's how you get people killing each other. Right. So in an instance where, you know, I saw two videos this week where one, a Trump supporter was at a rally screaming, go back to Auschwitz. And then another one, he was screaming at a, at a black person, uh, go back to Africa. I think what you're saying is that there's actually something good there because it's being unearthed as opposed to these people just festering. And They're screaming at you. Nobody's hitting each other. Nobody is. Well, people are hitting each other. Some well, people are. Well, the, the protesters, there, there's, there's, no, no more than a music festival, though. The, the line I always <laughs> use is, people, you need to get out more. Go to a rock music festival. Other than maybe probably Burning Man, nobody fights. But other, may, you know, but if you go to a rock concert, a rap concert, you, you have people, you're going to have people kind of fighting each other. And that's, again, media manipulation. Logic versus cognitive bias. Okay, logically speaking, if you have multiple rallies with 25,000 people there, and you have 10 of them, and there's one fight, that, what is that? Right. One in a hundred thousand, that would be the safest city in the world, right? But you focus on that one fight and that becomes the narrative, well, there's violence. Well, it was one 78-year-old guy punched a guy and, you know, the face is sucker punched him, okay? Well, there had been all these rallies and there's a couple instances, logically speaking, statistically speaking, that isn't really a big deal. Well, first off, but just to push back on that a little bit, I mean, Trump is also offering to pay that guy's legal fees, which seems pretty crazy to me. A guy punched, a 78-year-old man punched a black guy walking out, regardless, of, regardless of his race. Um, but punch the guy, and Trump saying, I'll pay for your legal fees, is a bet, uh, can you give me that one? He offered, that was a different time. That, you've, you've conflated different stories. So that was a different riot where. <laughs> so uh, I guess there's a couple of riots going well, on. Well, there, there, right? there are people swinging punches. I mean, did you see, um, did you see what happened when, um, you know, I don't want to give the guy free publicity, but there was a conservative Breitbart speaker who gave a talk at Cal State Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. I have videos of a Breitbart intern being thrown to the ground by a Black Lives Matter protester. I have the video, L Lauren Feldman, the director for Silence, we have it. Mm -hmm. That didn't make news. Yeah. Right? That suddenly. Well, violence you know, goes both ways. I, and everybody, look, the media yeah. likes what the media likes, but I have yeah. no doubt the violence goes both ways. Yeah, every, that's the thing, everybody's doing it. So th that's the interesting thing, too, about logic versus not logic. Why don't we objectively count well, how much drama is going on at a, at a Sanders event, mm -hmm. right? Well, he had a Bernie Sanders supporter jump over a guardrail to try to go to attack Trump, right? I read the guy's tweets, the guy is a total nut job. Yeah, he's a nut job. He goes on CNN and they treat him like he has stood up to a bully, right? Well, why is he standing up to a bully Trump? Why don't you say, well, hey, you don't like Trump, Trump's talking. Now you're trying to jump over a guardrail to attack a guy and he'd posted on Twitter before how he wanted to kill Trump and, it, Why well, isn't that? Yeah, it's sort of a nice way to, to wrap this thing up, although clearly we could have gone a lot longer than this. But it shows what a moral mess everybody's in, because I, I do agree with that. Look, I'm not thrilled with the things Trump's saying. Again, I'm not supporting the guy. But when that guy r rushed the stage, if you look at the history of this guy's tweets, he's a bit of a nutbag. He said some crazy things. And then CNN treated him like a hero. Now, meanwhile, if a Trump supporter had bum-rushed Bernie Sanders, everyone not only would say this guy should be in jail, but they wouldn't have given him an interview on CNN, but they'd also be blaming Trump. Right. So yeah, there, there is an unevenness here that we got to wrap up, but I think we did a little evening of the playing field here. What do you it's think? Because we're not logical, right? We're, we're creatures, we want stories, we want simple stories of the world. Trump understands it. He's playing the game better than everyone else. That's why they don't like him. But yeah, as long as we're talking, you're a human, I'm a human. You know, I don't want to kill gay people, you know, because I know a gay guy, right? I don't want to kill straight yeah. white guys, even though I know yeah. they're the worst. Well, yeah, I mean, you know? yeah, ultimately, that's what happens with people as you, as you talk to each other. You think, well, I mean, you're, you're saying gay people are this or this is that. But I know a guy and he's not like that. Well, that's not really logic. I know a guy. <laughs> therefore, all gay people are this or that is illogical. But that's the way we think. So, yeah, as long as you're talking, you're reaching out to people who disagree with you, your own illogical brain helps you become a better person.
That's how you end an interview. All right, so I want to thank Mike Cernovich, and you can check out his book, Guerrilla Mindset, How to Control Your Thoughts and Emotions to Live Life on Your Terms. Oh, and direct all uh, hate directly to him. It's at Cernovich on the Twitter. Thanks again, and we'll do it again next week.